Hey guys, thank you for joining me. My name is Wes and I work for Fleming Musical Instruments and Repair here in Houston, Texas. Uh, if you're looking for us, we're located at 1401 Yale Street in Houston. And uh, I've got something really cool to show you today. So one of my favorite instruments in the shop right now is called the YDS-150. Now there's a lot of unique things about this, this instrument here that I'll kind of start and go through. Obviously it's not a normal saxophone. Now what it does have akin to our, our saxophone friends is the fingering placement and the fingering system is full modern style saxophone. You even have uh, right hand F sharps, you even have extra keys here. The left hand pinky table is exactly the same as you would find on any modern horn along with the right hand pinky table as well. On the back we have our, we have two octave keys. This one controls just the regular octave that we all know and love. And then this one is a low A octave key just like you find on Barry saxes. So, this instrument is obviously unique. Hopefully you've already heard me play some of it at the beginning of this video. So kind of starting at the top, a lot of people ask me about the reed setup. Now the mouthpiece is, it comes with this instrument uh, and it does not function as a normal mouthpiece would. So the mouthpiece that it comes with is called the DS for digital saxophone, as you can see there. Um, again, it comes with a fiber cell type of plastic reed. And again, these do not function as, as an actual vibrating uh, part of your instrument. These are for mouth feel alone. They do feel great uh, between the teeth. Um, I, I have no complaints about it whatsoever. It feels like I'm playing any other hard rubber mouthpiece I've ever had on the, on, on any of my other saxophones. The actual instrument, um, is obviously the body, the bell and everything contained. It, it is, it is fully contained, uh, by itself. There's nothing really that comes off except the mouthpiece. Uh, as you can see, it's got rubber grommets here so that there's no need to ever replace any corks or anything like that. The instrument takes your sound pressure. 
that you apply via the mouthpiece and read. And that's what it uses to adjust the volume that it's, that it's playing. Speaking of volume, coming out of the horn, it has its own built-in speaker here. I'll be the first to tell you, this is not the, not the highest quality speaker, um, but it's not designed to be, um, to be projected through here. Now, speaking of projection and other ways that you can get the sound out of this horn, it comes with two jacks here, an auxiliary in and a headphones jack. So this will hook up to your amplifier, this will hook up to your keyboard, this will hook up to your computer, even for some interfaces. And anything that is played via the saxophone can also be outputted via the headphone jack. Again, tons of uses there. When the headphone jack is plugged in, there is no sound that's emitted from the internal built-in speaker. It feels comfortable in the hands. Uh, when I saw these the first time, I was worried that the plastic would, would feel not legitimate and I was wrong it really does feel comfortable in the hands uh, these mother of pearl like touches really make sure of that and again they're just in the right position so it just it does it feels very good on the back we've got lots of controls here um, top one here is power you can also change voices so as you heard at the beginning of this video you have the option of customizing them as well. It comes with a myriad of alto, soprano, soprano, tenor, and berry voices, along with some clarinet and flute. Any kind of variation in between. There are a few voices on here that are used for slap tongue. There are some voices on here that are used for more of a whisper tone uh, that some saxophone players are really famous for. So again, super interesting amount of voices here. Obviously it has a volume adjustment. Uh, and you can turn it all the way down and no sound is produced by this thing and you're able to kind of practice in an apartment, something like that, that you need to be quiet. This is a great option. Another great thing that this is used for is, as you can probably imagine, any kind of music producer, any kind of music mixer or someone who, who is looking for a, a a MIDI type controller that feels like a saxophone and plays very similarly to one. This is a great choice for those guys as well. Another really good implementation of something like this would be the, um, the classroom. Uh, it, you can easily switch between your flute voices and your clarinet voices, and it hooks up to your amplifier so that it can be heard all the way across your band hall or concert hall. Uh, or you know whatever you decide to use it for. I've seen a few of these pop up in the marching band scene, which I think is super cool. Uh, a few of our colleagues and customers here at the shop have also purchased them for their band halls or music studios, or you know, there we've also sold some to guys that were like, I can finally practice my saxophone and not annoy my roommates. The answer is yes, you found it. Some other really great questions we've gotten about this horn in particular is how is it powered? In, into this jack here and it will be powered fully for you. Another way to keep it mobile is it's battery powered. So it, we use four AAA batteries uh, and this will usually last the instrument about, it kind of depends on how much you play, but I would say up to about five to six hours of playtime before it ends up needing to be replaced. It's not a lot of time, but if, it, if you're on the run or on a gig uh, and you just, you need it fast and you don't have a plug available, those, those AAA batteries will do you just fine. Some other notable things on the back here uh, is this pitch adjustment lever. It's super neat. Uh, what you would do is while you're holding it with your right thumb, you can use this to adjust the pitch of the instrument. So I'll give you a quick example. <laughs> So it allows you to bend the pitch just like you would with any other normal instrument. Unfortunately, we can't do it with our mouths because as stated before, this is not a functioning part of the saxophone. It's just a place that we as saxophone players can put our, our embouchure and feel comfortable. It really is reading the air pressure that we're applying to the instrument via this mouthpiece. So again, if you need a pitch bend, it has that option as well with this handy dandy little analog stick here. This is the YDS-150, the Yamaha Digital Sax 150. Again, a great little instrument, a great little uh, tool for us musicians that are either on the go a lot or, you know, just need something a little, a little quieter. Thanks for watching. Again, my name is Wes. I work for Fleming Instruments and Repair at 1401 Yale Street. We have dozens of instruments here, as, as you can see. 
Uh, if you want to try any of them, everything that we have online and in the shop is available for trial. Please send us an email at my email, west.hughes at Fleming Repair, or my colleague, elvis.moreno at Fleming Repair, and we would be happy to get you guys set up. So if you're interested in trying this or anything else, let us know, and uh, we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching. You gotta turn it on for it to work. That's, that's how things go.